This video will be about cardiac cycle. We'll be explaining cardiac cycle, both the mechanical and the electrical events, and we'll use the help of Vigor's diagram. And this diagram basically represents the ECG, the ventricular volume and pressure changes, the atrial changes in the form of JVP waves, and the aortic pressure. So let's begin with the definition. A cardiac cycle includes two things. That is, it is a mechanical and electrical events happening in the heart. So there is, there are the mechanical events which include the atrial and ventricular pressure changes as well as the pressure changes happening in the blood vessels. And then there are the electrical changes happening in the heart, which we'll uh, understand from the ECG. Now the duration of heart, uh, each cardiac cycle, we know that we have learned about it in our lower classes. It's about 0 0.8 seconds. Now let's move into the phases of cardiac cycle. So to understand that, we need to know that there are phases corresponding to the atria and phases corresponding to the ventricle. And atria has its own atrial systole and an atrial diastole, whereas the ventricle has its own ventricular systole and ventricular diastole. Now what is the duration of each phase? We need to remember the duration. Out of the 0.8 seconds, atrial systole occurs only for 0.1 second, whereas for the remaining 0.7 seconds, atria is in a state of diastole. Compared to that, the ventricles are in systole for 0.3 seconds and in diastole for 0.5 seconds. So here I have shown the timeline. Uh, what we can see here is that the atrial systole, it corresponds to the later part of ventricular diastole, right? This is the ventricular diastole's later part and it corresponds to the atrial systole. Whereas the ventricular systole, while the ventricle ha ha happens to go through the systolic phase, the atria is in the diastolic state. And then we have this interval in between. That is called as the joint diastole. During the joint diastole, the heart is completely relaxed. So now let's move in detail uh, about the mechanical and electrical ha events happening at each phase. So let's begin with the atrial systole. The atrial systole from the earlier timeline, we know that uh, it occurs at the end of joint diastole, right? So what are the mechanical events? So the atria starts to contract and the blood, because of the atrial contraction, the blood will flow into the ventricles, right? And it is responsible for the final 30% percentage of ventricular filling. So the 70% occurs during the period of joint diastole, whereas 30% filling occurs, the final 30% occurs during the atrial systole. What was its duration? For every phase, we need to know the duration. It was about 1, 0 0.1, 1, 0 uh, 0.1 seconds. And by the end of atrial systole, the ventricular filling is complete and the volume of ventricle at this time is called as the end diastolic volume and it is uh, around 130 milliliter in a normal heart. Now the atrial pressure, obviously it must increase, right? And that will be reflected into the JVP. The waves of JVP represent the atrial pressure. When there are spikes or waves, it corresponds to increase in JVP. Whereas when there are descents in JVP, it corresponds to decrease in atrial pressure. So there will be an increase in the atrial pressure and that corresponds to the A wave in the JVP. What about the heart sounds? So uh, at this stage, our semilunar valves are closed, whereas our uh, atrioventricular valves are open. Since there is no additional closure of valves which are occurring, there are no new heart sounds due to valvular closure. However, when blood flows from atria to the ventricles, vibration of ventricular walls may occur and that may lead to the production of fourth heart sound due to the vibration of ventricular walls. What about the iota? So the semilunar valves are closed. There is no blood flowing from ventricle to the iota. So the iotic pressure uh, will decrease from 120 millimeter mercury. That is a systolic pressure and it will start to decrease and it will finally reach up to 80 millimeter mercury. So the, uh, these are the changes happening. Now in the ECG, this corresponds to the P wave. So we know that P, Q, R, S, T, right? So it corresponds to the P wave of ECG. Let's now represent this diagrammatically in the Vigors diagram. Here we have the Vigors diagram. So we, we, we begin with the ECG. It corresponds to the P wave in ECG. Now about the ventricular volume. I have said that the final 30 percentage filling occurs in the atrial systole. So the final 30 percentage and our final volume is 130 milliliter. Now moving on to the ventricular pressure. The ventricular pressure, it's not going to increase much. There is going to be only a slight increase because of ventricular filling. Because ventricle is in a state of relaxation, not in a state of systole during uh, AS. Uh, then uh, what about JVP? That is the right, uh, the A wave is seen. So we'll have an elevation and that will correspond to the A wave. 
now what happens what happens next is the beginning of ventricular systole so ventricular systole is again divided into three phases there is an isovolumetric contraction phase ivc and then we have a rapid ejection phase and then we have a phase reduced ejection phase now the duration of each phase the ivc is very short it lasts for 0.05 seconds the total ventricular systole is for 0.3 seconds out of which 0.05 seconds is isovolumetric contraction phase then we have the rapid ejection phase which is which lasts for about 0.1 seconds and then we have the reduced ejection phase lasting for the remaining 0.15 seconds let's discuss about the isovolumetric contraction phase what happens to the valves so the ventricles will start to contract as the ventricles start to contract eventually the ventricular pressure will exceed the atrial pressure at this point the valves the atrioventricular valves will close there will be closure of the atrioventricular valves why otherwise what will happen is that there will be blood flow from the higher pressure ventricle to the lower pressure atria to prevent this there will be closure of the atrioventricular valves and that will produce our first heart sound where uh, so where will we hear these sounds best they will be heard at the mitral and tricuspid area corresponding to the valves so mitral and tricuspid area of the precordium now about the ventricular pressure so ventricles uh, both the valves are now closed the uh, av valves are closed the semilunar valves are already closed the ventricles start to contract the volume of the ventricles stays constant whereas the pressure of the ventricles will start to increase and the ventricular pressure will reach up to what is the pressure of aorta the pressure of aorta will uh, as i have said earlier it will fall up to 80 mm mercury the pressure of pulmonary vessels will be around 10 mm mercury the ventricular pressure will start to increase and it will reach up to the pressure of aorta and pulmonary vessels that is the aortic pressure will be will be uh, around 80 mm the left ventricular pressure will reach up to 80 mm mercury and the right ventricular pressure will rise up to 10 mm mercury due to isovolumetric contraction when further contraction op- op- occurs what happens ventricular pressure will exceed the aortic pressure and blood will start to eject out that occurs in the next phase we'll discuss it next what about the jvp what happens to the atria during this contraction of ventricle the av valves may bulge into the atria and that will again cause a rise in atrial pressure and that corresponds to the c wave in jvp c wave in jvp now what about the ecg now let's move to the electrical event so we have the p wave in atrial systole then we have the pq segment which is the time for av conduction then the qrs complex right out of the qrs complex the r wave the later part of r wave corresponds to the isovolumetric contraction phase so let's represent this diagrammatically we have in the ecg we have the p wave then we have the pq segment then the q wave and r wave now what about the ventricular volume the ventricular volume is same because it's isovolumetric contraction phase the ventricular pressure will increase up to 80 mm of mercury and the uh, aortic pressure that will decrease up to 80 mm from 120 to 80 and about the jvp there is going to be another spike that corresponds to the c wave so we have the a wave and we have the c wave here we have the p q r segments what we have next is the rapid ejection phase it lasts for about 0.1 seconds so what happens here is the semilunar valves will open the av valves are still close and the blood will flow from the the at, because of contraction there will be a transient rise that is the pressure will rise from 80 mm to 120 mm in the left and 10 to 25 mm in the right and then what happens is that the blood will start to get ejected so what happens to the aortic pressure the aortic pressure will increase from 80 milli, uh, mm mercury and it will slowly start to rise the pressure will rise and it has to attain the 120 mm mark so that rise will occur during the rapid ejection phase now how much of blood is ejected about 70% of the blood is ejected out during this phase ejected out during this phase the ventricular pressure will reach a maximum what about the atrial pressure because of the ventricular contraction the atria the av valves will be pushed pulled downwards because of the contraction that will actually cause a reduction in the pressure of atria that will correspond to a descent in the jvp wave which we call as the x descent so we have the x descent corresponding to the rapid ejection phase are there any heart sounds uh, there is there are no closure of valves occurring just the opening of valves so there are supposedly no heart sounds associated with the rapid ejection phase what about the ecg this will correspond to the st segment of ecg after the r we have the s and then the st segment so to represent diagrammatically 
it corresponds to the st segment so here we have the st segment what about the ventricular volume about 70 percent of the volume of ventricle is ejected out so there will be a dip in the ventricular volume what about the jvp jvp there will be an x descent a dip will occur and about the ventricular pressure it will rise up to 120 millimeter of mercury and the aortic pressure the aortic pressure will also start to rise up to 120 millimeter of mercury now let's move to the next part that is the reduced ejection phase the duration is about 0.15 seconds what happens here is the ejection still continues the left ventricular uh, pressure will fall from 120 millimeter mercury to the 80 millimeter mark it will start to fall off there will be a decrease uh, in the left ventricular pressure the valves are the semilunar valves are still open and at the end of this phase what happens is that the aortic pressure will exceed the ventricular the left ventricular pressure so the aortic pressure will be 120 millimeter mercury but the blood will still continue to flow because of momentum what about the atria there are no uh, waves or descents associated with atria the blood will fall into the atria and there will be an increase in pressure but however there are no waveforms which are associated what about the heart sound as i've said earlier there are no closure of valves occurring so there are no associated heart sounds and the ecg changes this corresponds to the t wave after the st segment if we draw the uh, uh, diagram we'll have here the t wave and the ventricular volume the ventricular volume will reduce and it will be ejected out and it will reach the baseline value of 50 mm which means from 130 to 50 around 80 ml of lead is ejected out and that is what we call as the strokes volume what about the ventricular pressure the ventricular pressure will start to decrease and it will uh, be lower than by, by the end it will be lower than that of the atrial pressure which reaches a maximum of 120 millimeter mercury then about the jvp there are no changes occurring in the jvp now we move on into the ventricular diastole the ventricular diastole has four phases that is there is a phase of proto diastole then we have the isovolumetric relaxation phase then we have the first rapid filling phase and then we have the reduced rapid filling phase or it's also called as the diastasis so let's begin with the proto diastole and isovolumetric relaxation phase we'll say it together because the duration of proto diastole is just 0.04 seconds and the duration of isovolumetric phase is just 0.06 seconds so together they have a duration of 0.1 seconds what happens here so as i said the aortic pressure is 120 millimeter mercury right even though the left ventricular pressure is lower than that blood will still continue to flow and then eventually what happens is that these valves will close so there will be closure of the semilunar valves and then what happens is that the ventricles will start to relax there will be relaxation of the ventricles all the valves are now closed the atrioventricular valves are closed already and now the semilunar valves have closed so, and what happens to the ventricular pressure it will fall really low from 80 millimeter it will start to decrease the ventricular pressure will start to decrease what about the iota the iota the blood flow to the iota will be stopped or will end and about the atria since the uh, blood is continuously flowing from the veins into the atria the atria and atria is and the av valves are closed right so basically the atrial pressure should increase and this will lead to the corresponding v wave that is there will be an increase in the atrial pressure because blood is not flowing into the ventricles and that will lead to the v wave in jvp what about the heart sound here the semilunar valves are closing so that will lead to the second heart sound and where are they best heard they are best heard at the aortic and pulmonary area aortic and pulmonary area what about the ecg change this uh, corresponds to the later part of t wave diagrammatically the ecg the later part of t wave corresponds to isovolumetric relaxation phase and proto diastole the ventricular volume is constant and it is uh, at 50 ml then coming to the ventricular pressure the ventricular pressure will rapidly decrease there will be a dip in of the ventricular pressure and about the jvp there will be an elevation of the jvp there will be a v wave what about the iota so the blood flow has stopped so the aortic pressure will be at that 120 area it will slowly start to decrease a, a small fall will be there moving on to the first rapid filling phase it occurs for a duration for about 0 0.1 seconds what are the mechanical events happening so the first event is the opening of the mitral valve and the 
tricuspid valve and blood will flow from the atria into the ventricle now the semilunar valves are closed whereas the uh, mitral valves are open and there is a natural flow from the atria into ventricles and as a result what happens is that there will be vibration in the vessel wall and that corresponds to the third heart sound what about the atrial pressure obviously the atrial pressure will descend and there will be a decrease in pressure the which leads to the y descend in jvp and the ventricle blood flows into the ventricle from the atria and in the aorta there are no specific changes or comments to be made during the first rapid filling phase in the ecg this corresponds to the area between the t wave and p wave now let's move on to the diastasis diastasis lasts for about 0.2 seconds and what happens here here the remaining blood flow happens right that is the semilunar valves are closed whereas the atrioventricular valves are open and the blood flows from the atria into the ventricle freely the ventricular volume will start to increase about 70 percent we had said 30 percent of filling occurs during the atrial systole whereas 70 percent of filling occurs during diastasis and the ventricular pressure will increase but it is still lesser than the atrial pressure at the end of this diastasis at the very end of this diastasis what happens is that the atrial systole will occur and the remaining 30 percent will fill what about the iota there are no comments or no characteristic change jvp there are no changes there are no waves or descents and heart sounds it corresponds there are no corresponding heart sounds during diastasis it's just a relax relaxing phase of the ventricles where blood is freely flowing from the atria into the ventricles and ecg again this part also corresponds to the region between the t wave and the next uh, p wave, next p wave so that's it let's diagrammatically represent the last two phases what happens to the ecg it corresponds to the t wave the region between the t wave and the p wave so we have this segment and the ventricular pressure it will rise about 70 percent of the filling occurs coming to the uh, uh, ventricular pressure the ventricular pressure will actually increase slightly for the atria there is going to be a dip there is going to be a depression and then the pressure uh, will be higher than that of the ventricles and for the iota there aren't much changes there will be it will reach up to from 120 it will deplete up to 80 millimeter mercury so that's the events which occurs in the cardiac cycle and if we are to plot again the, what will happen here we'll have our next p wave and here our ventricular volume will rise up to 130 130 milliliter the ventricular pressure will be more or less same there is not going to be much increase and for the atrial pressure for jvb there is going to be an a wave for the iota there is not going to be much change so this is our vigors diagram and that's about cardiac cycle